The ball is tomorrow. I have no worthwhile memories of such events, yet I'm still looking forward to this one. As am I, in the sense that I look forward to destroying all of the unworthy suitors who will inevitably swarm Lady Edelgard. I will admit, Edelgard is adorable. However, when it comes to elegance on the dance floor, I am superior. You're not a bad dancer, Ferdy, but you do have some moves that are hard to watch. You honor me with your kind words. I understand that I am sometimes too dazzling to behold directly. I'm envious of your positive attitude. I also know how to dance, in theory. Maybe I should participate as well. Not me! You wouldn't catch me dancing at a ball any sooner than you'd catch a fish swimming through the sky! <laughs> well, you do tend to flop around like a fish on the land, after all. Well, why would you say that? Now I feel like a fish on a skillet. On a skillet? <laughs> Never mind. Speaking of the ball, do we get to pick who we dance with? I wonder who I should ask. A bold subject change. Should Lady Edelgard wish it, I would be honored to. I will fight with all that I have within me. Fighting? No, that's not really the point. I will not be as a fish upon the flame. Um, okay. I have a proposition. Let's all agree to meet back at the monastery exactly five years from today. Like a class reunion? It's a great idea. Five years from today will be the Millennium Festival for Garrig Mach Monastery. I've heard the magnitude of the festivities will exceed all prior years. Oh, how exciting! Sounds like a great excuse to come visit our dear Professor. You will be seeing how much growing I have done. You will be pleased, Professor. This idea is good. Who knows where each of us will be in five years' time, or who we will become. Still, I have faith that all of us will gather and celebrate our reunion. That's assuming the professor is still here in five years, and not enjoying a cozy early retirement. <laughs> Even if that's the case, you will come, won't you? Whether or not you're still teaching here. Don't forget, my teacher. Even if the Millennium Festival should be cancelled, I promise to return here. Running away? I understand. You hardly had the time to breathe in there. It must be hard to be the favorite teacher at the ball. <laughs> poor, poor professor. So you do think you're the favorite? <laughs> I might have known. But where is there to run? This place is filled with joyful students looking for a dance. Ah, I see. The Goddess Tower waits for you.
professor. He showed up. <laughs> Well, because you're here, of course. <laughs> you came here because you read the letter I sent you, right? Are you saying this is... a coincidence? How disappointing to think you didn't come here specifically to see me. Still, if we're meeting by complete chance, that has a certain appeal, too. It's as if destiny brought us together. <laughs> and tonight is the night of the ball. Lucky me. Oh, that's just when you're looking through me in front of others. When it's just us, I kind of like it. Originally, I wanted to see what you'd do when you read my letter. I just wanted to see if you'd come here like I asked. I had a feeling that you would. Though, I suppose you didn't even read the letter to begin with. I should just be thankful I wasn't left here waiting. All alone. Forever. Do you know it's been almost nine whole moons since you arrived at Garrig Mock? You must have found a special someone by now, haven't you, Professor? You've made me so curious. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to pry if you don't want to share. Your private life is private, after all. Well, I ought to get going. I wouldn't want to be in the way if your special someone shows up. Either way, I do hope you'll share a dance with me later. <laughs> It seems that everyone is having a delightful time. Will you not dance some more? How dull of you. Had I a body of my own? Oh, I would sing and dance until I fell upon the ground. But you... <laughs> do as you will. Oh, you're not the only one who feels that way. Look over there. I'm bored beyond compare. Will you not follow her? Oh, come on, hurry up. I know that you are curious to see what she is up to. I hear someone singing from over there. song. I feel that I have heard it in the past. Actually, it is not that I have heard it. I... Did I once sing that song to someone? No. There's more. I wrote this song. Oh, but how could that be so? that were true, then how could she be singing it? Unless... No, no. I am suddenly so exhausted. As are you, no doubt. Quickly then, to bed with you.
Captain? Captain, where are you? Hey, Professor, have you seen your old man? Too bad. I guess it will have to be you, then. I'm back. Sorry for the delay. My last mission took longer than expected. Captain, thank goodness you're here. There are reports of demonic beasts near the chapel. Nonsense. I haven't heard anything about the monastery's walls being breached. That's why I'm heading there now, to see what's really going on. You'll join as well, won't you? Of course. We're both sworn to protect this place. It's odd. Just before they appeared, someone saw a number of students heading toward the chapel. They were apparently acting strange, as though they weren't in their right minds. Shortly after, demonic beasts started to appear, one after another. Hmm. The students. There's no way those demonic beasts got in from the outside. But none of that matters right now. We need to act. Go summon your students. Damn it. I wanted to talk to you about something important, but there's no time. Oh, there's never any damn time. But this is much more urgent, so it can hold for now. I'll meet you there. There really are demonic beasts here. They're emerging from the chapel. I'll head that way. The rest of you, protect the students who weren't able to get away. Help me! These beasts, they're... Uh, somebody, help me! You stupid beasts! Don't you dare come over here! I am Ferdinand von Eyre.
I will prevail. to work. That's my cue. I'm good now. Nothing personal. I will get the victory. Stay focused. Put me in there. Let's take them out.
beast. There's a stone or something on its forehead. Can this be? Thank you, but my friends who couldn't get away, are they okay? Just like that. yields results.
shouldn't strain myself. Mark of nobility. I was so scared. I'll find a way to repay you. I promise.
Sorry. That was a close one. <gasps> you saved me! Thank you. trace of evidence to be found in the chapel. This must have something to do with Ramire. Perhaps... Wait! Huh? Another student? Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. <laughs> <laughs> for all your help, sir. <laughs> huh? What are you doing here? You must survive. Merely because there is still a role that I require you to fulfill. First time I saw you cry, your tears would be for me. It's sad, and yet, I'm happy for it. Thank you, kid. So this is where your father lived. Hmm? Are you still crying? If turning back the hands of time was not enough to save his life, you must accept what came to pass was fate. Control yourself. 
Though Gerald's death was at the hands of wicked ones, a fate is still a fate. Oh, your father said to look for something here. He must have been referring to whatever is behind that bookcase there. Your father's diary? Huh. His handwriting is prettier than his face would suggest. Well, well. These entries here are from before your birth. He seems to have been writing this for quite some time. Hmm? Oh. Read that part there. Horsebow Moon, year 1159. Day 20 of the Horsebow Moon. All is cloudy. I can't believe she's dead. Lady Rhea said she died during childbirth. But is that the truth? And still, the child she traded her life for doesn't make a sound. Didn't even cry at birth. Day 25 of the Horsebow Moon. It's raining. The baby doesn't laugh or cry. Not ever. Lady Rhea says not to worry about a baby that doesn't cry. It isn't natural. I had a doctor examine the child in secret. He said the pulse is normal, but there's no heartbeat. No heartbeat? Day two of the Wyvern Moon. Sunny. I feel I must take the child and leave. But the church is always watching us. I don't know what Lady Rhea has planned. I used to think the world of Lady Rhea. Now I'm terrified of her. Day eight of the Wyvern Moon. More rain. I used the fire that broke out last night to fake the child's death. Lady Rhea is in a state over the news, but I can't change what I've done. I've got to take the child and leave. Well now, that baby must be you. That means... Someone is approaching us. Ah, here you are. To think that Captain... that Gerald would meet his end like that. I hope you know that you were the most important thing in the world to him. He wasn't the most emotional guy. I'm sure expressing his affection wouldn't have come naturally to him. After what's happened, it's up to me now. I, Alois, swear to protect you in the captain's stead. <sighs> Sorry. This isn't the time for my blathering. Lady Rhea is looking for you. I came to tell you that. I'll take my leave now. This book is filled with secrets yet unknown. We must return another time to read the rest. Oh, but I have at least figured one thing out. I know now why our fates are intertwined. Professor, I have been waiting for you. I am filled with grief at the loss of our most celebrated knight. Gerald was an ally of many years, and also a dear friend. He fell in love with one of the nuns here at Garagmark. Their love produced a child, whom she died giving birth to. It was her decision. She weighed her own life against that of her child's and, in the end, implored me to save the child. Your father never truly accepted that decision. He took the child, took you, and disappeared without warning. Your mother, she was my... I'm sorry for the interruption, Lady Rhea. There's something you must hear immediately. A report from the knights patrolling the area. Very well. Professor, you are dismissed for the day. Please rest and focus only on mending your heart. Understood? <laughs>